Hello guys, welcome back to GP Tester. Today we're going to be benchmarking the GTX 1660 Super. You can see the specifications of the card on the screen right now, and you can also see the specifications of the test bench I'll be using. First game on our list is Spider-Man Miles Morales. We're going to be playing at 1080p using the very high settings. And one thing I've noticed in Spider-Man Miles Morales compared to Spider-Man is that it stutters a lot more. I noticed this in my previous 1060 benchmark video where Spider-Man actually ran really well. However, Miles Morales had really bad 1% and 0.1% lows. And I think that seems to carry on here where we get 23.1% lows. Again, the overall experience is pretty good, but there are just every once in a while there's a spike in the frame times which, which ruin the experience. The average FPS you get is 58, the 0.1% lows are 41. Hey Danica, so why would they made a run at the inner demon? How things go? Not how you'd expect. When devil's breath, never be under Next game on our list is The Last of Us Part 1. We're gonna be using the medium preset at 1080p. In The Last of Us Part 1, we get an average FPS of 47 and 1% 1 lows of 42. The 0.1% lows are 34. In this game, the 0.1% lows are heavily affected by the amount of VRAM your GPU has because this game eats VRAM for breakfast. However, the overall experience isn't bad at all. With an average of 47, you can definitely enjoy slow-paced games like The Last of Us Part 1. Next game on the list is Uncharted The Lost Legacy. We're going to be playing at 1080p using the high quality settings. This game actually ran pretty terribly on the 1066GB where there were a lot of stutters because of the VRAM filling up. But surprisingly enough that's not the case here although it does also have 6GB of VRAM it doesn't fill it up and there aren't massive stutters. That could be due to the fact that 1060 has GDDR5 memory while that 1660 Super has GDDR6 memory. I believe it also has a higher memory bandwidth than the 1060 which could also be a reason why it's not filling up its memory and even if it is filling up its memory it's not stuttering as much. Overall, the experience is really good with an average FPS of 59. Get the jump on us. I'm starting to wonder whether you're worth the 50%. I knew it. You were going to give me up. Next game on the list is Uncharted 4. We're running this game at 1080p using the high quality settings. In terms of averages, we get an average of 65. The 1% person lows and 0.1% person lows come in at 41 and 40 respectively. Again, our VRAM seems to be maxed out, but there aren't any stutters, which means it gives you a really good experience and there aren't massive stutters that can ruin your experience. There are probably a few stutters here and there, but not, but not enough to stop you from having fun. Right. See that truck get past that? Next game on the list is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We're gonna be playing this game at 1080p using the high settings. We're also using the next gen update. Although it does improve visual quality, it also affects the performance. 
and it is way more GPU demanding. In terms of FPS, you get an average FPS of 42, the 1% one lows are 40, and the 0.1% lows are 32. The 1660 Super is not a card suited for 60 FPS in 2024, but it definitely can play most games you throw at it. And for most people, that's all they want. They don't want 60 FPS or 100 FPS. They want to be able to play and enjoy games, and the 1660 Super is enough for casual gamers. Next game on the list is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're going to be playing at 1080p using the high quality settings. In RDR2, we get an average FPS of 63 with 1% and 0.1% lows coming in at 55 and 53 respectively. The frame times are really smooth and the experience is really good. There aren't any big frame drops that you can notice and the game looks gorgeous on these settings. You don't have to utilize upscaling and because the game is pretty slow paced, you don't always need 60 plus FPS even if it does drop to 50s, it won't be a big problem. Next game we have on our list is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're gonna be playing at 1080p using the high quality settings. Like Red Dead Redemption, Assassin's Creed Valhalla actually runs surprisingly well on the 1660 Super with it getting 68 FPS average and 54 FPS 1% lows. The frame time is really smooth and it's definitely a very fun experience playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the 1660 Super. Next game we have on the list is a little old, but it's still as popular as any other game. We're gonna be playing at 1080p using the very high quality settings, and I think we all expect it to run really well. And it does just that. It gives us 73 FPS average with 56 1% lows and 42.1% lows. I'm not gonna lie, I expected a little more from the 1660 Super. But this is not bad at all. Next game we have on the list is Doom. We're gonna be playing at 1080p using the ultra quality setting. And Doom runs as smooth as butter on every card I tested on, I swear, man. <laughs> In terms of numbers, we get 102 FPS on average, with 1% lows coming in at 87, 0.1% lows coming in at 82. It's a really fluid experience and I would have a lot of fun if I had to play Doom on the 1660 Super.
next game on our list is Horizon Zero Dawn. We're gonna be playing at 1080p using the ultra quality preset. In terms of FPS, we get an average FPS of 54 and the 1% lows come in at 46. The point one percent lows come in at 33, which is still above 30, so it's fine. Overall, the experience isn't bad at all. Generally, the frame time is pretty smooth. You do sometimes get the occasional stutter when you change locations, but you don't really face that in general gameplay. Overall, it's a really good experience and you can definitely enjoy it. Thanks for saving me from those machines! Talk to you for a minute. Next game on our list is the finals. We're going to be playing at epic settings at 1080p. In terms of FPS, we get an average FPS of 42. The one person lows come in at 34, and the point one person lows come in at 29. I would not suggest you play this game at these settings, considering it's an extremely fast-paced shooter. What you should do is lower down your settings to low and maybe you'd get 60 FPS, but uh, it's still not gonna be a great experience. Team Wipe Calamity for the Socialites. Time to trade those party shoes for combat boots. Top shells are playing for keeps. They've snagged the match. Next game we have on our list is Fortnite. We're going to be playing at the high settings at 1080p, and we'll be using the DirectX 11 API. In terms of averages, we get an average FPS of 55, the one person lows come in at 35, and the point one person lows come in at 11, which is an engine issue. I keep repeating that in every video I test Fortnite. Fortnite stutters a lot, no matter what GPU you put it on, and the one person lows, and especially the point one person lows, are always gonna be low. That aside, uh, the FPS is uh, not that good for a multiplayer title and you should probably lower your settings to low to get that 60 FPS experience and then you can enjoy the game. And then you can enjoy the game. The final game we have on our list is Valorant and uh, we'll be playing at 1080p using mostly high settings. In Valorant you get a lot of FPS. Valorant is a pretty light title so you get a lot of FPS and you should not have any issues playing it with the 1660 Super. That will also wrap up our benchmark. I hope you had fun watching. Do let me know in the comments what you think and I'll catch you in the next one.